G'day, Michael here. I've been asked a compound set of questions. Um, I'll try and answer all three of them and try and be fairly quick. It's always complicated to be quick, but here we are. Um, now, the questions related to trying to manipulate photos for laser engraving with Photoshop. Now, I don't have Photoshop. I use GIMP. And as such, um, all my demonstrations will be using GIMP. Um, GIMP is available for, obviously, Linux, um, it's also available for Windows and, and Mac. The uh, difficulty with using uh, GIMP on Windows or Mac is that you have to find the software together. On GIMP it's basically a click away. Um, so it's a bit easy to install open source software on Linux because it's handled by the distributions themselves. Whereas uh, Apple and Microsoft tend to try and stop you using open source software, at least don't make it any easier than necessary. Um, yeah, so without any further ado, let's turn these girls on. I've got my uh, little Mac Mini and uh, an even slower uh, Atom box here. Now, all my other machines are tied up doing things, so here we go. I'll turn these guys on anyway. While they're booting up, I've got this is an example of engraving at a plywood. Now, in plywood, you can afford all these half tones and so forth. With glass, it's very difficult to, um, the glass is very difficult to handle the different half tones around the place. So this kind of image, you might be tempted on glass to pluck away the background and simplify the image. And bearing in mind, what is black on here would end up being white on glass. What is white on here would end up being, well, you end up being darker on glass because when you engrave on glass, you actually lighten the surface. Okay, I'll log in. Oops. Um, so, with glass, you'd want to be uh, taking away or simplifying the image as much as is practical, and we have to also invert it. Now, there are a couple of little traps along the way which I'll try and cover along the way through. Um, yeah. And part of it is actually the file format you're likely to use. Okay, so that's coming up. Um, so the file itself can sort of mislead you and it might be creating problems for you, as well as um, the understanding of inverting the, how the colors work. With the plywood, what looks black on the screen ends up being black on the plywood. Um, What's when you do glass, it's absolutely inverted. So obviously, if you want kind of a dark background on the car light, let's say, you'd have to have the car looking relatively dark on the screen and the background looking white on the screen. So your brain has to go backwards on your thinking. All right, so let's um, let's open it. Time. I can be a little bit patient here. There we go. Okay, so I'll launch GIMP. Let's focus on them and not me. There we go. Double click. Yep. Now I'm a little bit all thumbs with Apple because it's not the one I tend to use the most. Um, So, ah, when you're looking for a photo, it's probably worthwhile, coming back to my example here, probably worthwhile, actually, if you can at the original, take the photo in such a way that you've got very little complexity in the image. So, you're showing the detail of, say, a portrait's usually a good idea because portraits have a, um, like, usually a plain background, and, you know, so it's less difficult for you. But if you've got, like, trees in the background, like you have, sort of in a normal photo that you take out in the wild, uh, you'd actually have to clean those off the outside. I'll try and find a photo that's not too crazy. Let's just go back computers. Um, okay, so I'll open that one again. <coughs> Okay, 
So we've got it there, we've got it here. Now what you will see, regardless of which system it is, now I'll close that, doesn't need to be there. In essence, the, the program interface is pretty much the same. What does change between the systems is how the mouse and keyboard works a little bit. Now with this image here, I'll just go to the Mac for a second. With this image here, you can see the background's quite complex. We get away with that engraving on plywood, but we wouldn't get away with it engraving on glass. There'd be just too much happening. So for the moment, what I'll do, um, I'll leave it as is. Um, to show you an effect that we have with um, changing the size. So I'll just do that now. We'll go Image. Now right click on GIMP gives you the menus that are up on the top of the screen. So you might find it quicker to just right click and dive into the menus that way. So I'll just go Scale Image. Now I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's Set the typical sort of 300 dpi, blah, blah, blah. You want to change that to pixels per millimetre because most of the lasers actually work in millimetres, not in imperial measurements. So, okay, for pixels per millimetre, we want to change that to being a round number. It's very important, no matter what you do, regardless of anything else, if you walk away with anything from this video, this one is a vital organ. Um, the, whatever you're doing with scaling, the uh, resolution of the passes of the machine have to be exactly a neat either one or two or four multiple of the pixels. It's, it's no good to have like 6.73 pixels per line. So if you're working in millimetres, get it converted to millimetres from the beginning because an inch is 25.4 millimetres so you, you get out of control very quickly with those pass resolutions. So by picking the resolution here at the photo, you can control exactly what the passes will look like on the laser. If you do something different, then you are exposing yourself to a possible harmonic problem. Okay, so I've got 10 pixels per millimeter. Now I'll change this to being millimeters as well. So now we can say, well, the width of it's gonna be 200 and the height's gonna be 131. But we can change that to whatever size you want. And GIMP will actually scale this image, but we've got to do this in the color don't do this after it's black and white because you lose your ability to control the pixelation. You have to do this while it's colour. Now, uh, with RD Works, if you drop this image onto the, the work area, it'll automatically engrave with the right pass. It's 10 passes per millimetre and it'll be exactly that size. So this actually will literally translate. But if you want to scale it up, say, twice as far, or if you want to change your passes to, say, two par uh, pass every 0.2 of a millimetre, which is five passes per millimetre, it will still actually work beautifully, but don't choose, say, three passes per millimetre if you've got it set at ten passes per millimetre in the original, because you'll get a funny harmonic. So really, it's important to have uh, whatever your passes are, a nice multiple of the pixels, like one, two, four, eight. Any multiple of two will be fine. Okay, so I'll scale that. We've got the scaling done to the size we want. Now, the first thing we do is uh, go colours, invert. So this shows you uh, like a negative of it, but you can see the problem we have with the negative, kind of, sort of, if we engraved on glass, that's what it would get, except it wouldn't do colour, it would do black and white. By doing the inversion there, you kind of get a feeling what it might look like. And you can see that the background is pretty complex here for the image. So what I might do is, I might undo that, Control Z. That listen to me? No? Okay, edit, undo. And we might now change it to being that black and white image. We'll be going backwards and forwards a little bit, so bear with me. So, image, and change its mode to indexed. Black and white, one bit. And we're going to choose positioned. Convert. Now, if we um, zoom in enough, you can see how the dots are made up, but that will be literally line for line, dot for dot, 
the laser will replicate that. So however it looks now is how the laser would do it. Now, the way this is done, this is what it would look like literally in plywood. But we need to, um, if we want to see what it would actually have done in, in glass, I'll just zoom back out again, it would be that inverted again. So colours, uh, I can't invert it, it's black and white. All right. So I'll go undo, hit undo. Colours, invert. Image, mode, indexed. It's on the screen, yep. Position, convert. So that there, if you were to engrave in glass, it at least have the right characteristics. Um, the lighter stuff would remain clear and the darker stuff would be more etched, which would lighten it. Okay, but you can see the background is, is complicated, so you'd have to actually clean off the outside. Um, okay, so you can see this image is quite uh, cluttered with background detail. What I think would work quite well, particularly on glass, and probably on you know, anything really, um, is if we get rid of this background, now you can do that at the colour stage and it may actually be easy to recognise details on the image that you want to keep, but doing it here we can see instantly what the result looks like rather than just the colour. So there's, there's an advantage to doing it before now and it's, you know, there's also advantages to doing it in the black and white state. Let's just do it here as we are. Now the tool we need to use is some some programs called a, a lasso. It calls it the free select. So I'm going to just start where I can see an edge very easily. Uh, let's just try there. Now it's important to leave a little bit of an edge on the piece you're keeping so that uh, it can kind of be defined. A bit like a, um, I don't know, kind of like you see on cartoons where there's an out outline of the image and then it's coloured in inside. So it just gives a little bit of a definition, particularly on the glass, because where the object isn't, there'll be zero detail. So it's important to try and give something a defined edge. Now bear in mind, black here is where something happens, white is where nothing happens on the engrave. Right, so I'll zoom in a tad. So if you've got a white object and you, which means nothing will happen, like here's an area, that's a reflection, but the bonnet actually goes up higher. So we have to go high enough up so that we'll have, have some of the edge detail showing up on the bonnet. It'll make sense probably as I get a bit further out, across. So I'm kind of cutting a little bit too big, just so that we end up with an edge that will show up on the engraving. Now this little old Mac's pretty slow, it'll probably be a bit quicker on the Linux machine. But nonetheless, I just want to show that it all works just the same, just as well, on, um, on Mac. Anyway, that wheel is slightly turned in, so I think we would see the edge. I'm making that assumption anyway. You can take a little bit of artistic license too, it doesn't have to be perfect. But it does have to convey the right... Uh, image. It's kind of like, if it looks right, it is right. It's not about being literally perfectly correct. But it has to look, you know, reasonably good. I'll zoom in on that again. I'm not sure how wide the tyre is, but again, if it looks right, it is right. Signage is the same. It has to look right. It's a whole raft of things that are done that way. Getting close.
Okay. So I'll zoom out. Here's where the fun starts. Okay, so I think I'm going to go edit, cut. I'm going to this back to front. So that was, yes, that's back to front. So that's exactly done what we don't want it to do. So edit, undo. So I have to go select, invert. So now if I go edit, cut, you can see that's what we have. So if we wanted to go out of our way to clean out these details underneath, we could do that as well. Perhaps we should. Um, yeah, perhaps I should just do that and get it done. In leaving a little bit of an edge there, so it's got something to define. Remember, the black is engraved. Now, on Linux, I can go Control X, but here it doesn't seem to work. So on the Mac, the keys are a little bit different. So I'm just going to go cut by using the menu option. I also am not using an Apple keyboard. I'm using a uh, standard sort of. I'm not sure whether I want to keep that. Let's see what happens. Maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. See, there we go. Well, just do it anyway. Next. Hit it, cut. So that is what that looks like. Now, what I was saying about the file type being a confusion, this is what I was coming to with uh, a JPEG file does not support transparency. Uh, PNG supports transparency. Now, what I might do is actually go onto the other machine. So we'll leave this intact. Okay, so we'll go on to the Linux box. Now, let's say we used our fuzzy select and I picked on, I don't know, this area. I go control X, which is a quick way of editing it. You can see what's happened there. It's produced a white background. Now, go control Z to undo that. So I'm going to tap tighter. So you've got the lance crawling around the place to define the edge of the image. If we go to the layer here and go uh, add alpha channel, right, so that's been done. If I go control X now, you can see we've got like a checkerboard background. Now, let's say I save this right now. I'll export it as. I'll do it straight on the desktop so it's at hand. And I'm going to call, well, that'll be fine. We'll save it as a JP. Export. Now, export it as a PNG. Just to show you the difference. What we've got to do on GIMP is to just change it to PNG and it saves it as the PNG. Export. The PNG files are much larger, but they do handle more types of information in the image. <coughs> and you'll see shortly. You can even see it here in the icon. This icon is transparent. You can see the blue background coming through. And this one here is um, showing the white background. So I'll just 
like that, like that. You can see how one is transparent versus the other one showing like the um, checkerboard thing. The checkerboard is just to indicate to you that it's transparent. So if you were to invert a colour image and you have it in white, it'll end up being black, so it'll end up engraving it. If you invert a transparent portion of a PNG, it will still stay neutral. It won't all of a sudden become something that gets engraved. So there's a trap that could potentially be in your design. At the end of the day, if we go back to our Mac here, which is what we have, whatever's white is not engraved, whatever's black gets engraved. And what I mean by white and black, they are only white or black dots. There is no such thing as a grey here. The illusion of grey is generated by the kind of density of the black dots. But by doing it the way we've done it, it is in fact going to replicate what we ask for in the image when it does the engraving. Well, I guess that is about as much as I can say about that. I hope, hopefully I haven't fallen asleep. And this has been you know, some use to you. Uh, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.